Hi, I'm Lauren Presley, and welcome to Howdini.com. With us today is Pauline Fromer, the creator of the Pauline Fromer Guides. We're going to be traveling today by car. Hi, Pauline. Hi. Renting a car is so overwhelming for many of us. There's so many choices, so many different prices. Let's get rolling on that. Sure. Well, the big problem is the prices have risen so much in the last two years. They're up 20% because the car manufacturers are no longer giving car rental companies the kind of deep discounts on purchases they used to. So prices are really much higher than they used to be. What's the best way to get a deal? Do you combine it with your airline ticket? How do you do it? Sometimes packages can be a very good deal in terms of rental cars. A lot of people turn to sites such as Priceline and Hotwire and bid blindly for cars because they only deal, these companies only deal with Avis, Hertz, Alamo, so you're not going to get some fly-by-night operation that way. Uh, other people make a booking and then simply recheck to see if the price has dropped. So you go to Avis, Hertz, Alamo, what have you, you make a booking, you don't have to put any money down, and then the next week you see if the price has dropped. If it has, you cancel your first booking and you make another one. Next week you do the same up until the trip, and you'd be amazed at how much money you can save that way. What about the prepaid gas option, Pauline? Oft times the rental companies will offer you a full tank of gas or the option of you filling it up when you get back. For the most part, it's not the best idea to get the prepaid gas option because most of us leave something in our tank. Uh, and that is money lost. But it really all depends on where gasoline rates are and what the rental car companies are offering. The biggest mistake people make is over-insuring their car. Almost anybody who owns a car already carries much of the insurance that they're asking you to buy. Things like third-party liability is probably already covered, so always check your own insurance before you buy it from the rental car company. You may also get some additional insurance from your credit card company as well. Another hidden cost is when you rent on airport. So many cities are now trying to fund their new stadium with airport taxes. Simply by renting off airport, you can save a heck of a lot of money. For example, at the Texas airports, you will pay 20% of the cost of the rental in taxes if you rent at the airport. You will not have nearly that high an amount if you rent off airport. Well, what about size of cars? Can you save money if you get a smaller economy size, or if you have a large family? How do you gear for that? I'd say rent the smallest car that your testosterone will allow, and then once you get to the rental counter, that's when you ask for an upgrade. It'll usually be less expensive that way, and there will be times when all of the cars, all of the smaller cars, will be out of the lot, and you'll simply get an upgrade for free. Renting a car in Europe, any suggestions for that? Often you'll pay less if you use the local agencies rather than the multinational uh, organizations, and you can find them through a terrific organization called Auto Europe which is based in the U.S. but deals with local rental companies and, and is usually the cheapest to Europe. As well, there are some regulations in Europe that will surprise Americans. If you're over the age of 70 and you're planning to go to Ireland uh, and Italy, you're not going to be allowed to rent a car. As well, if you're going to Italy, you're going to be forced to buy the entire rental insurance package, whether you want it or not. It's simply the law there. Well, thank you for the information on car rental, Pauline. We're ready to go. Thank you.